Welcome back to the Tradesman Garage. I'm Justin and today I'm going to be showing you a set of cornhole boards that I made. Uh, I've actually been working on them since before I created this channel. It was kind of the inspiration uh, to start recording my work and, and, and sharing it with the world. So this is a very, very intricate, custom-made, hand-dremeled, epoxy resin, coin inlaid set of uh, cornhole boards that you won't pretty much see anywhere. I, I was unable to find uh, any any sides of ideas of what I can do with cornhole boards, aside from using uh, vinyl stickers. And, and before I actually started making these boards, I did not have a vinyl cutter back then. So everything uh, that you're gonna see here was hand done, hand drawn, and uh, <laughs> there's a lot of detail in these boards. So let me know what you think. Uh, this was for a going away gift for a coworker. And he said that he wanted something, uh, something unique, something that they, you just can't go out to the store and buy and something that nobody's ever done before so i decided heck i'll give it a go and it's been a it's been a long six months so let me know what you think in the comments below not a how-to this is just to check out what i've recorded since uh, we started the channel and today we finally finished them out so check it out So I was searching online and found a picture of the control tower where we work. I thought, why not try to transfer that to some wood? And I did. I tried two different color stains to get a good contrast and then rough draft, if you would, etched with the Dremel. Now during this process of transferring that picture onto the big board, I did not have graphite paper. I didn't know really what I was doing. This is my first time doing a project like this. So everything you're seeing in these still photos is all freehand. After I got that all down, uh, I started dremeling and dremeling and just some more dremeling. I messed up the first board really bad and I actually scrapped that entire board and started over from scratch again. But once I got this one about the way I liked it, I just kind of left it alone for a month and did not touch it, just sat there and looked at it. But came out pretty well. Now as for this board, uh, the second one we were using an F16, so I got a picture online. I took that picture and then printed it out and tried the same concept of let's do a rough draft and it worked. But this time, found out what graphite paper was, so I went ahead and took a really big picture of that F16, blew it up, threw it on top of some graphite paper and started tracing everything out. And holy moly, this was so much easier than trying to hand draw every individual little piece and I could get the lines nice and straight pretty much on the first try. The hardest part of this entire build was the detail that I had to put into this F-16. Now, mind you, it doesn't look the best. It's not 100%. I'm not a CNC machine and I'm not an artist by any means. So this was all brand new to me, but I think it turned out pretty well. I did this board twice as well, just like I did on the other one. I did a really, really bad mess up on the top of the tail uh, to a point where it wasn't fixable. I tried sanding it out and it was just getting worse. So I started over and now what you're seeing is pretty much the beginning of the channel here. This is actually where we started. I made really small clips of this and posted them to my Instagram account, which then I put on some Facebook accounts and people were like, man, you should make a YouTube channel. And well, here we are. As I dremeled this out, I had a little bit of nicks and some uneven spots. So I went ahead and did some touch up with the stain, went through, re-dremeled some certain spots, gave it a little 3D effect if I could, and then sanded it out to make it more of a, a drop in. Once that was complete, I needed to make two coin drops up top and the name. So for the coin inlays, it's really simple. I laid the coin down, drew around it with a pencil, and then took the depth of that and used the plunge router attachment for the Dremel. Super simple. I mean, this was probably three minutes per coin, uh, and it was pretty much done on the first try. It was pretty cool. So then I added the 20th OSS up top with some graphite paper and etching, basically the same way I did the rest of the designs. Uh, 
now that I have a Cricut maker, I'm gonna be doing vinyl stickers. It's so much faster, way easier, and super, super efficient. Now, as for all the other names that you see there in Sharpie, uh, so this is a going away gift, and typically when somebody goes away, we'll use a plaque, a picture, some sort of item that we can all sign and they can hang up or put up on a shelf uh, to remember everybody by. But in this going away gift, we put it on the board. I figured that that would be a pretty cool idea and then we could throw some epoxy over it and be kind of like a talking point, a remembrance every now and then when you pull those out to have a party, get together. Uh, you know, you can look back and kind of see the different things rather than hanging them on the wall. They're, they're, it's like an active piece in your life. So for this, I'm using a one to one ratio epoxy. This one's actually got some UV protectant in it as well. It's basically, it's a tabletop epoxy and I wanted to have a really nice hard finish, a clear look. Uh, I wanted it to preserve the names underneath as well as the coins, but I also didn't want it to yellow when it was being taken out and put into the sun. So the UV protectant really does help. But if you've mixed epoxy, you know they mix for like five minutes. I actually didn't burn my batteries up, I was super surprised. Uh, but this stuff is no joke and extremely tough to deal with. So this is actually the fourth time I tried on two boards. Since I scrapped the first two projects, this is where we're at now. I actually got pretty good around this time. So this came out a little bit more smooth than the last shoot four attempts I had done. I actually scrapped one completely down and sanded it all the way off and tried again. But this result came out pretty well. Minus a few flies that sabotaged it. I ended up sanding them out the next day, but it looks pretty good. As for the sanding part, uh, I believe I started with 220 grit sandpaper, random orbital sander, like always, the most used tool in this shop. It's insane. Uh, but anyway, I used it. And then I followed that up with 320 grit sandpaper just to smooth it out a little bit more. That way I can get any imperfections out of it. Uh, make sure you're using a mask and dust collection would be preferred. Epoxy dust sucks. It's terrible, uh, it's tacky, it's sticky, and it is it can be fine grit and it has a really weird smell to it. So just make sure you're wearing a lot of good safety protection for this. So once it was sanded down, it was time for the final pour and this one's called a flood coat. I put a little bit more in that mixture than I should have actually for this one. But the idea here is to put a really thick, even coat over the top and let it drip over the sides. Once that was done, the next day I came back, tried to remove it uh, from the cardboard, ended up having to sand down the entire frame and I went through about 20 or so discs of sandpaper. So again, epoxy is really, really tough to work with. I highly recommend you practice on scrap projects before going into a big one like I did. You, you've got to get used to it. But now that we did that, I slapped everything together. I had the legs made and this was the result. I think they turned out pretty well. They're extremely shiny, and for this set, you actually have to use a dual-sided bag. Uh, so one side's got a grip to it, and the other side's more slick. But I think it's a pretty cool eye catcher. It's definitely a talking point at a party, and uh, I, I just hope he likes them. Well, there you have it, custom-made cornhole boards that were hand-dremeled and epoxy resined over. I'd never worked with epoxy before, but uh, that was a bit of a treat. <laughs> Learning how to figure that out was a, it, it was a challenge. We did mess this board up. I have no idea how many times. And I have actually redone both of the tops from scratch at least once over. So there's a lot of mistakes made in this, but I think it, in the end it turned out pretty well. And um, epoxy is not the easiest thing to work with, let me tell you. So do your research, do your homework, and make sure you have a very clean and not, not too humid environment. Otherwise the stuff does not dry properly. Uh, but that's it for this build. It was it was fun. It was a pleasure and uh, Yeah, I hope you liked it for the next couple videos uh, I'm gonna be doing a review of the Delta 36-725 uh, T2 table saw uh, That'll be coming out in the next uh, month or two I want to have some more time to get some work on it I got some more boards I've got sitting behind you there and uh, I got to get those finished up I got some little odd projects that we'll put in the mix too, but I'll also do a shop tour of the new shop setup. If you haven't noticed, we kind of 
turned everything around. But once all these videos come up, uh, make sure you go ahead and give them a look, give them a like, give them a dislike. Let me know what you like, what you didn't like in the comments below. And uh, if you haven't hit the sub, join us. There's about 70 subs now. We've only got two videos up. So I appreciate all y'all support. Um, thanks a bunch. It means a lot. If you haven't found me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram. Check the links below and uh, you can see my day-to-day -day activities. I post little snippets and small videos of uh, me working in the shop pretty much regularly. So check it out. Let me know what you think and uh, we'll see you next time in the Tradesman Garage.